Welcome to the IBM Podcast Network. In 2015, Ambekan Hoshner quit their jobs and set out to rediscover the country through planes, trains, and rickety old buses. What started as a break has now grown into a life of travel and discovery. On this podcast, they take you through the highlights of their journey. This is the Rediscovery Podcast. In the last episode of this season, we take you to the forests of Bhandar Dara to witness a truly phenomenal sight. So May and June, just before the monsoons, the forests in the Western Ghats play host to the mating of the incredible fireflies. And so we headed to Bhandar Dara, an hour east of Nashik, to witness this unique phenomena. So fireflies are not really flies, as you know the name might suggest. We thought they were flies too, but they are beetles, and they basically emit this glow. by using bioluminescence and the glow is to attract mates so they're pretty cool creatures you know the ones here you see in this part of india are usually the ones that emit the sort of fluorescent yellow glow but around the world you have ones that emit you know orange green a pale red and you know some of them emit smells apparently all you know to attract mates so you might have a sweaty smelling you know firefly well i mean women wear perfume so it's kind of the same thing i guess kind of the same thing yeah men also wear perfume yeah not just women so basically we went in may 2016 yeah it was hoshner's birthday it was so my it was, birthday yeah so it's kind of and a birthday present and the fireflies were something we wanted to see for a while and it happened to be a time when we were not traveling elsewhere We were in Bombay. We were in Bombay, so we decided, yeah, and uh, that region of the Western Ghats sort of is the hub to see fireflies at that time of the year, which is basically just before the monsoons. Yeah. End of May, early June, around the time the first showers hit. Just before and just during. Yeah. yeah. By yeah. the time the showers start getting heavy, they die out. So you need to, you know, make sure you go on time. Yeah, and they kind of die out. We learned because they're so small. they get destroyed by the heavy rain so that's really why they're little, they, yeah, little little guys so anyway we headed to bhandar dara to celebrate hoshner's birthday now from bombay a lot of people go to purushwadi which is a section of the ghats that are easier to access if you're going um from bombay pune side but we decided to go to bhandar dara near a village called shendi shendi which is a <laughs> <laughs> Okay so that's a different experience <laughs> and the reason we decided to go was because we just wanted to see the village and the fireflies purushwadi is a more immersive experience you go you camp so if that's the kind of thing you like then you could uh, definitely head down that side so we got to bhandarara and we stayed at the mtdc resort which like all mtdc resorts is it's huge very decent yeah decent decent yeah. food so is decent food is decent places decent rooms are good and large and and obviously like all these tourism resorts anywhere in the country they always have the best views so the government takes like this spot and says ha ye acha hai so the mtdc overlooks the arthur lake which is uh, oh, the bhandar dara lake as uh, everybody calls yeah. it it's a big word uh, bhandar dara bhandar dara so this lake is sort of set in the middle of you know all these mountains and the whole region is basically hilly and it's all sort of circular around the lake it's a pretty beautiful sight when you're driving up to bhandar dara also it's very scenic especially if you go in the monsoons it's it's like the mad fluorescent green that you know Maharashtra gets in the monsoons. Yeah, and I mean we were we went just, just before, before the and monsoons. It was still, and it's still beautiful. Yeah. yeah, still really beautiful. So one can imagine how much more crazy it would be in or post the monsoon. So the lake is formed by a dam and is fed by the Pravara River, and because the resort is on this ridge high above the lake, you can see. all these other ridges all around and apparently on a really clear day you can see mount kalsubai which is maharashtra's highest peak yeah so kalsubai is pretty close to bhandara bhandar dara <laughs> actually it's just i think it's like half an hour 45 minutes away by car yeah and then you can go and you can do the trek up the trek up it's not so is- it's not an easy trek but it's supposed to be a pretty good trek we didn't do it ourselves though it's on our agenda to do sometime in the future well, we have many treks to to explore in maharashtra one of the things i think people do there is the harish chandra ghat fort yeah right? so like any other place in maharashtra you know it's full of forts so you look in any direction throw a stone you'll see a fort right right 
so there's harish chandragarh there's one more right there's a uh, the ratanwadi ratanwadi yeah so there's, there's many Kasubai, i mean yeah so, so there's anyway so we are digressing from the fireflies i mean we got there and we just what it was so it was cool up there because you're at a certain height and we were with our friends so we really just spent the the day chilling uh, yeah. taking so, in the so views so basically we planned to go see the fireflies obviously in the night because that's when you know you can see them yeah you have to be dark. pitch black <laughs> yeah so we had a guide who was coming down from nasik to show us the fireflies and he was supposed to you know come to the resort and pick us up about i think it was 6 7 yeah, in the evening time. yeah so he calls at 6 and says yeah we are just you know leaving from nasik so we might be a little half an hour 45 minutes late Yeah, and and Bhandar Dara and MPDC is what? It's not that far from it's Nasik. It's pretty close it's to Nasik. A lot of people from Nasik and Igatpuri and that region yeah, go there. Yeah, it's like there. a weekend day trip yeah. type of location for them. And so we say, "Ha, okay, he will come in half an hour, forty-five minutes." One hour went, one and a half hour went, and we are getting a little panicky, right? Because we've come to see these fireflies. Everyone's pumped, like you know, oh, fireflies and all. And this guy is nowhere to be seen. At one point, he's not picking up his phone, and nobody knows where the hell he is. And then I think he lands up around nine nine thirty. No, no, it wasn't that late. It was pretty late. It was like seven. It and felt late because yeah, it gets dark. Yeah, and he said, "Okay, okay, you come to this spot and we'll meet here." And so we find our way to that spot, and and this guy has come with half the aunties and uncles in Nasik, basically. So we we they ex- were like four five cars. No, they were it not. It wasn't four, half like, of Nasik. Like it was a convoy of cars. <laughs> like the president has come to Bhandara to see the fireflies, and that many cars were there, and we we're like, "Oh God, this is going to be terrible." But it worked out okay because for whatever reason the guy took a shining to us, so he came in our car and our car yeah, was the first one in the, the convoy. The first one, and and he gave us all this inside these tidbits, I yeah, guess. I guess about he made up forest. for his tardy behavior because he knew his stuff. He yeah, was and, pretty uh, good, and that's why we had booked him because we heard he was really knowledgeable, and he's from that region, so he really knew the ins and outs of the forest. He knew. All these cool facts about like the tribals in that region, about you know the trees and also. Yeah, he took us to this very cool temple to see also the, the Amruteshwar Amrute temple. Yeah. So most temples in India you see are built in granite or sandstone. This one was built in volcanic rock. And it's black. So it was yeah, so it looked very different and it was nice. It was like lots of carvings, just dark you know structure, not very large, but pretty intricate. And old, old. The temple was like I think around thousand years old, and it's a Shiva temple. And the style we were told was kind of on the ancient Hemad Panti style of architecture, which is similar to the temples we'd seen in Lonar, which you can hear about uh, on our Lonar podcast. Yeah, so there is you know sort of similarities in how the temple was built and the detailing and all the carvings. Mm. And the cool, I mean, like Hosha said, the cool part was it was all black, but the inside is all color because you know we can't have I think black on the inside. But must visit on the temple. So then what? We passed the temple and then yeah, he so takes us to for the temple. Checked it out and then everyone was like, no, no, come on, fireflies and all. Yeah, fireflies. We were really worried that <laughs> we're not going to see them, you know, because we've been waiting for the last four or five hours. So we get. Uh, past the the temple and then we are climbing up the ridge and at one point he's like okay now we'll stop here and we sort of stop all the cars on the edge of the road on the edge of the forest yeah, so the setting is such that it's pitch black okay you're inside in these uh, you're literally in the forest in bandadara and it's there's no lights there's no light pollution at all and the only lights is your headlight Now the thing is, these fireflies you can't really see them when your headlights are on. So or every, any light is on. Yeah, that's so why you go every you know couple of minutes. He says, "Keep driving, but turn your lights off." So you're driving this car in complete darkness, and this guy he had that he knew where to stop. Now a lot of people go to see the fireflies. They go randomly walk around the place, and believe me, you're not going to see them. You need to know how to go about spotting them. So really, if you decide to do this. Please take a guide. Whether you take one from Nasik or you take one from somewhere else, but take a guide along because there's a way to spot them which you simply will not be able to if you're doing it on your own and just walking randomly through the forest. Yeah, which is what we realized once uh, we stopped the cars and you get out of the car. And now he's very particular about telling you again and again that. Photography is prohibited. Don't make sudden movement. So Don't make a lot of. Photography is not prohibited. You can't use a flash. Fla- yeah, flash photography. Sorry, and because these fireflies, these winged beetles, are very sensitive to sudden noise and light. To right? any disturbance, also. Yeah. So you have to be really quiet. So everybody gets out of their cars, and we're all standing around him, and he's pointing in one certain direction. So we're all looking, 
but you can't really see anything and then suddenly your eyes adjust to the extreme darkness around you and then you see the fireflies and it's, it's like it's pretty magical whoa, whoa, whoa. It's yeah, pretty magical. yeah it was very it was it was like these yellow little bits of yellow lights dancing all over the place yeah, it was a, it was waves yes yeah, so, so when you i think when you think about fireflies at least when i thought about it, it it they always in my head they were like you know blinking lights in the forest like fairy like a lights like blanket yeah. Yeah, because I think the the photos that Hoshan and, and also I have seen that and the most common I think is that the fireflies are like a blanket on low shrubs and so my assumption was that they were only found on low shrubs, but here all the fireflies we saw were on the tops of trees, on the sides of trees, and what we also learned from our wonderful guide. But there are many types of fireflies, and the ones over here in the Bhandara forest move in very definite patterns. Yeah, so they, they move don't in, just hang out. They move in unison, so there'll be a it'll be like a whole bunch of them moving together, and they actually form patterns on the trees. So they'll move in one direction, then they'll move in the other direction, up, down, left, right, and it's like a wave of light moving across the tree. Yeah, that was, and it's really cool to see. Very cool, and then so we saw these waves, and then he takes us to the next spot, and then the next spot, and the next spot, and one of the spots I remember they were moving in circles. So they were going round and round. So that was a bit trippy, also, to see them moving in circles. And then in another place, they move like in and out, sort of. So each formation was a bit different. different. Yeah, it's all different. And yeah. that's really the key is that you have someone who takes you to see the different spots and the different formations, and the sight. I mean, you cannot imagine just how incredibly beautiful it is. It's so. Weird. It's very special, I think. Yeah, it's it's special and it's it's a little trippy, and I think what made it even more special was because it's pre monsoon and the air over there it's so clear. There's no noise pollution. There's no buildings and light. You can see a million stars right yeah. above you. Yeah. So that was. Yeah, so if you're into photography, it's a great place to sort of. Go and try your hand at doing some long exposures because if you set up a long exposure there, you will get star trails along with the fireflies. So you your photo will have these streaks of yellow moving across it, and the stars from behind. It's it's a pretty incredible sight, all in all. Yeah, yeah, it's quite a magical experience. I yeah. think I would say something special. So we so we spend what at least two two and a half hours going to about four five different spots that yeah, our guide our, had taken our us to. Our and with our pal- who were fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean you're in this place that you can't help but you know follow the rules. You're listening to the guide, and, and everyone is just wowed by what they are seeing. Mm-hmm. And then, then a couple of hours later, we were taken to this uh, local villager's house to have dinner. So that was kind of a nice uh, end to the evening. Yeah, and I mean, besides the MTDC, there are also these smaller homestays run by local villagers, which you can stay in. You know, to give you the whole experience, where they'll feed you local food, they'll take you for walks around the forest, and they are also guides. So, sort of economy is based around a lot of the tourism driven by the fireflies. So they are also very. Uh, conscious about conserving it and you know doing the whole scene properly yeah there's um for those who want something a little bit fancier there's that one anand van resort which is right next to the mtdc and that's very nice very nice and there's views also yeah, so you have all sorts of stay options you have anand van at the top end and the mtdc and you have homestays right right so i mean bhandar dara is uh, it's about 180 kilometers from mumbai uh, and about an hour and a half from nashik it's uh, fairly remote so if you're going from bombay you can either take a bus or a train to nashik and then book a taxi it's or you take your own car you have your own car i think it's nicer that way because you'll have to drive around looking for the fireflies but don't do it on your own get a guide get a guide for sure and uh, a cool thing to do is um, if you've got some time to while away like we did drive around the lake you can drive around the whole lake which is a, a really beautiful drive it's a long drive along the lake and the it's apparently really epic to do in the monsoons but uh, we obviously went just before the monsoons and if you want to see the fireflies you need to be very cognizant of the time you go so you know early june last week of may no later than the second week of june because it'll be done you won't get to see anything by then and it sort of keeps increasing until the first heavy showers come so depending on when you see when you go the intensity will be very different Yeah so this coming me I mean don't complain so much about the heat pack your bags and head to Bhandar Dara so that's it for this episode and the season 
to know more about our travels and adventures across the country and get some cool tips of places to visit, check out our website. That's www.rediscoveryproject.com. We're also on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Pinterest. Thank you so much for listening. See you next season. Happy travels. And that's a wrap for season one. Stay tuned for season two, where we plan to bring you interesting travel tips, talk about our favorite homestays, markets, and discuss how we stay in our budget of 2,500 per day, all inclusive. To know more, stay tuned to our website, www.rediscoveryproject.com or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And download the IVM podcast app so you can get the new episodes of season two as soon as they are aired. The Rediscovery Podcast is an Indus Vox Media production. If you like listening to this podcast, also listen to the Fan Garage Sports Podcast. New episodes covering cricket, Indian football and fantasy cricket are uploaded every day. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is your captain speaking. Sorry to say, but there's been a slight delay due to the apocalypse having suddenly begun. As you can see, there's death, destruction and chaos taking place all around us. But don't you worry, food and drinks will be served shortly and I would recommend checking out IVM Podcasts to get some of your favorite Indian podcasts. We'll keep you going till this whole thing blows over. Thank you.